this pouring it out concept yesterday, this idea of energy and matter was brought to my attention and it was in like a woo woo scenario. I ended up making a post about it. And then I had someone who's generally on here, Kelly, hi, good morning, um, asked me a question. She's like, I get it, but I don't really get it. Can you explain it a little bit more? And it's been just like in my spirit. And then it, literally this morning, I'm having a conversation with my mom and she's talking about things that she doesn't have versus things that she does have. And in the lack of what we don't have, we get so focused here when God's like, but remember that, remember that thing that I gave you, that blessing, that other blessing, that other blessing, not only the blessings that you've requested, the blessings that you have wanted to have, but simultaneous that the blessings that many people don't have, many people don't have peace. Many people don't have joy. Many people don't have, or they tell themselves they don't have the energy to get on the bike and do the thing. And so what do you have and how can you serve it out to other people? And how is that connected to the book that we're writing? And I say we're, this is going to be um, a non-co-authored, but a co-inspired piece by my husband, who is my favorite person in the world, hands down, but also brilliant and um, wise and He has all these golden nuggets of things that he has kept as treasures. And so it doesn't matter what he does or doesn't have from a physicality perspective. God has given him wisdom. And that's what King Solomon requested in the beginning of his reign after his dad, King David. He's like, Lord, I don't need anything other than wisdom to steward what you've gifted me well. And that's what I hope all of our prayers are. If we can put our intention towards wisdom, if we can put our attention towards discernment, if we can put our attention towards, God, I want to hear from you. Let me go back like the Old Testament does and find the prophet who's connected to you, who I can ask questions to. Now, since Jesus came and we can live by his spirit and we can have access to him, direct access, we don't need to have another anointed one come to speak to us or for us to become reliant on somebody else's word when we can get into the word ourselves. Remember, this is pre-word. They didn't have this. We do. This is why it's called the living word. This is your resource. This is your agent. This is your handbook. This is all the things that you need. It's your guiding light. And so go to the guiding light and find out how it was done and see how does that apply to you. So one of the things from our book that we're going to be talking about is finances. How do you operate out of a place of not enoughness? And again, that's just a mentality. That's a poverty stricken mentality on the fact that I don't have a thing that I perceive that I need in order to do a thing that God has called me to do. Okay. This is where the energy and matter conversation comes into play. A lot of people are saying that they need matter. We're going to call matter money. We're going to call matter time. We're going to call matter energy. We're going to call matter health. All of these different resources that they need. People, we can put anything on the exterior that we think that we need. A network, a connection, followers, okay? All of these people as the matter. And so we think we need the matter in order to make the move. We need the matter in order to be energized towards what it is that we want to be, want to do. We're putting matter as the precursor. And that is literally opposite to what the Lord teaches us to do. He says, you need the energy that will propel you into the matter. Okay. So the thing that you want or the thing that you think you want, because <laughs> sometimes you get what you want and it's not what you want, right? All the money in the world doesn't bring the happiness. All the energy in the world doesn't bring, well, I think energy brings a lot because it's spirit led, but energy doesn't necessarily bring the money, right? There's another element to that. That's a whole nother conversation. Let's stay here. But understanding that it's the energy, which is the Holy Spirit. You need to be driven into the matter rather than thinking the matter drives you into him. God, if I only had more money, I wouldn't be here in the corner weeping and asking for prayer. God, if I only had a stronger anointing, then I, then I could have more followers. 
Oh gosh, if I could just land more stages, God. I hear this all the time. Then I would have enough clients. Then I would have the impact that I want to make. God's like, no. What are you doing in your quiet place? What are you doing in the place that you need to stay focused into? Operating out of little and understanding that abundance comes from that energetic alignment, that spirit download that then energizes you into the matter. It's so much different. So let's understand this. What happened? This is going to be my book, y'all. So maybe not in this phraseology, but it's been happening time and time again where I am earning, yearning, earning. I am yearning and then earning because God is that good. When you yearn for something, he wants to give it to you. He's a good, good father. When my kiddos come to me, they're like, mama, I really want ice cream. (laughs) It's not what they should have, but we eventually get it. Right. And so understanding that what your child yearns for, you want to provide to them. And so does he. And so this woman, uh, I don't know if she's actually named. Nope. Her name, her, her title, her label. Ooh, we can talk about labels here. Her label given to her by the community, even in the word is she was a widow, widowed member of the group of prophets the widow of the member of a group of prophets. So she was a widow. You are divorced. You are single. You are broke. You are impoverished. You are hungry. You are like whatever you want your label to be. You should just be under the label of child of God. You should just be under the label of I'm a woman of God, a man of God, all of those things. But we can so often get stuck to the stickiness of the label that society gives us. And I've been in that place and sometimes I still am where it's like, that's been slapped on me because sometimes those things can be good labels. They can be a label that you become proud of and proud sometimes will lead to pride. If humility isn't connected to that proud and that title supersedes what it is that God gives you, right? Don't let it supersede what God gives you. That label is the most important label you could possibly have. So she ends up going from widow to woman for Elisha. She ends up going from to widow to an overflowing woman. She ends up going from widow and broke to an entrepreneur and uh, a provider for her family, which is also incredible. So let's talk about it. So this is the widow who comes to Elisha and Elisha was the prophet that was anointed after Elijah. I talked about this on Tuesday. Remember, you can remember who comes first, J before S. So Elijah before Elisha. So she comes to Elisha and she says, my husband who served you is dead and you know how he feared the Lord. But now a creditor has come threatening to take my two sons as slaves. So don't you know, you can put yourself in a bind. Sometimes it's not your fault. Sometimes it's the fault of a spouse who hasn't been honest. Sometimes it's the fault of a a previous generation that has laid a burden in your lap. 